Schools have been navigating a bumpy road for some time now. A tough economy erodes budgets. Levies go down to defeat with regularity. Okay, but mostly they all pretty much rotate. And teachers struggle with students who have significant emotional and behavioral problems. Headlines all too frequently tell of violence, poor test scores, and failing grades. Those problems started way back in second and third grade. You know, a child who doesn't come to school in high school, if you go back and look, they probably weren't coming to school in middle school. And some children, I was shocked to learn, have high truancy rates in third grade. One national study noted that frequently, students who require intensive interventions, social services, and supports are experiencing moderate to severe emotional and behavioral disorders that significantly impair their functioning and quality of life, adversely affecting families, school, peers, and community. Nonetheless, public schools have to take all children and they have to, they have to help children. I mean, one of the fastest growing programs in Ohio are special education programs for severely emotionally disturbed children. First things first. While the vast majority of children under 18 are successful and motivated and eventually turn into good citizens, there are a large number who go into kindergarten and preschool with a lot of baggage. <laughs> they start out as troubled children. When they first come in, they have chips on their shoulders. They feel like they have to try to make their way. You know, they don't know where these other children are coming from. This is what we're going to do, Kayla. Kayla, turn around here. Time to calm down. She has an anger problem. And they say it stems from her, when her mother left her with her grandmother, and then the grandmother walked off and left her. Two, two. Jerry and Andrew are the parents, and they were feeling very frustrated because of Kayla having tantrums, which we saw some today. But I can tell you these tantrums are much shorter than the other tantrums have ever been. Oh, okay. Rosetta is the only child. And I said, well, has she ever been in preschool before? And she said, well, yeah. She said, there's something I have to share with you. I have to be honest with you. And I said, okay. She says, uh, Rosetta has been kicked out of other daycares, other preschool programs. Remember, the ages of the children we've seen so far are under five. And the problems these youngsters have include many medical issues. That's another problem for many parents, getting the right medical care when a child needs it. Dursen came to us, he was in the toddler room, and um, as he began to develop, about six months after being here, we noticed that one of his eyes was starting to turn in. He would not look at books, he would not listen. So we called our educational coordinator for the Head Start Plus program at that time, and she contacted Lens Crafters and they gave him a free exam and gave him free glasses. He's wonderful now. He, he loves looking at books. We know that every child, every one of us, is a product of our genetic makeup and our life experiences. And that who we are really begins from the time of conception on forward. And so the children that have been exposed to a significant amount of stress, even before birth, but certainly after birth, can have potentially lifelong impact on how they do. There's little doubt that the early years of a child are important, but there is an increasing body of research that says what the child learns and how is the determining factor for the direction that child takes over a lifetime, good or bad. Surprisingly, it is the economists that are getting people's attention because they're saying if we put money and resources into early childhood development, it could save our economy. And that money spent in early care should be part of every city's economic development. Now, it sounds like a pie-in-the-sky idea until you see who's making the recommendations. Recently, Federal Reserve Banks have been using some of their uh, research tools to better understand economic growth and development more broadly throughout the region. I think return on investment is an absolutely appropriate term to use when we talk about early childhood education. And this is one of the reasons that we became interested in it. The returns to education seem to be, um, seem to be exceptional in some cases. 
and they certainly deserve to be thought of carefully when public entities, whether they be local cities or states or the nation as a whole, consider how public dollars should be allocated. And that's our focus on this special program that will show how we're helping our youngest citizens get the best possible start in life. And at the same time, maybe we'll find a cure for Northeast Ohio's economic problems. I'm Ramona Robinson. I'll be joined by Channel 3 News education reporter Kim Wheeler and Dick Russ, Channel 3 News managing editor. And we'll be visiting many exciting programs all over the region that will challenge you to become a supporter of early childhood education. It's a positive yet provocative story.